Hey, welcome back to Game Dev Academy. I'm Shane. Please sign the register by leaving any comment down below the video and I will be popping your name up on screen in the next video just like I'm doing with these names right now. In the last video we didn't do too much. It was a nice simple one where we just got a newborn to spawn when the old one died. But in this one it's going to be a little bit more involved. We're going to make it so that we can have different coloured blocks by making use of a dynamic material instance. And we're also going to make it so that we can set different points values to each of the blocks that we've placed as well, which we can use for counting up points later. So let's get ready to jump into that after I tell you about this video sponsor. Today's video sponsor is Out of the Box Plugins. They provide modular plugins for Unreal Engine, from simple quality of life changes to complex systems to speed up your development process. They provide clean and easy to use blueprints to take away some of the pain of programming. Use the link below to find out more about what they have to offer. In this step, what we're going to be doing is setting up our block blueprints so that we can have different colored blocks and have the blocks with different scores all coming from the same blueprint actor. So that's what we'll set up now. But first of all, I just want to do a bit of tidying up in the ball. Uh, a couple of jobs that we need to do. So the first thing I'm going to do is find my uh, begin play section here, which is where I'm getting my player. And I want to get the game mode as well, because we're going to need to make it so that um, we're getting scores from the blocks when they're de destroyed. And we're going to need to store the scores in the game mode uh, and then get that printed to screen. So we need to make sure that we've got access to the game mode in here. And so the way I'll do that is I'm just going to right click here and do get game mode. Oh, get game mo. There we go. And out of the return value of this, I'm just going to cast to my game mode. So there it is. BO game mode for breakout. And then what I want to do is just get that so that it follows from this begin play. Because as soon as we begin the game, I want to make sure that we've got access to that. So there we go. Let's just line that up a little bit. Lovely. And what I want to do is make sure that I've got access to this as a variable within this blueprint. So I'm going to as game mode, drag it out of here, and then just promote to variable. And that's going to set this as a new variable. And we're going to call it game mode. And then we've got access to our game mode, which is good. And of course, it's always a good idea to comment. So let's add a comment to that. And it's just going to be get game mode. So we know what that's doing. The last bit that we need to do on this before we finished is just compile and save. And then we're done in this blueprint for now. Where we need to be working now is in the block blueprint. So we'll move back here to find it. There's the BP underscore block. So let's get that open. And now we can add some features to the block. So all we have really on this happening so far is that when the ball hits it, then it's going to destroy, which is fine. But we need to get a few other bits of functionality in there as well. And we're going to do that through the use of the construction script. Uh, construction scripts, basically, these fire every time a block is spawned. So we, we can have control of that at the actual spawn of a blueprint rather than at the beginning. So in, a, in a, the regular blueprint, in the event graph, we can do things on begin play, but we want this to happen whenever it spawns. So into the construction script for that, here's the little purple thing to get us started. So what we're gonna do to get the blocks with different colors is we're gonna create a dynamic material instance. And that will just allow us to, when we drop a block in the level, we can then change the color of it. And it'll all be based on the same blueprint. So that's really cool. So what we'll do is just click on block up here. There we go. And then we're going to just, from our construction script, we'll drag out of here. And we're going to do a dynamic material instance. So there it is. Create dynamic material instance for the block. So we will select that. And what we need to do is set the source material for this. So what we're going to be creating dynamic instances of, it's going to be the M underscore basic for now, which is just the, the one material that we've created. So that, that makes sense. Now we need a new variable. So I'm just going to click on the plus symbol here. We're going to call this block color. Oh, I'll get my capitals in the right place. Block color. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to click on this little I here. So you can see there it says the variable is not public and will not be editable on an instance of this blueprint. That's telling us that it's not doing what we want it to do. Let's click that and it shall, it'll change the um, variable is public but missing tooltip. 
<laughs> I don't think that's supposed to happen. I think there's a little bug in Unreal Engine. Um, so what this means, I'll explain it for you, is that now we've clicked on the ad, this makes this, this variable public. And so when we're in the level, whenever we create an instance of this blueprint, we can change this variable, which will be very useful to us uh, for creating our dynamic material instance for each of the different blocks. The type of variable is not right for this because at the moment it's a Boolean and we want to change the variable type to linear color. So it's not in the kind of standard one. So I'm just going to uh, start typing it linear color. There it is. And then we know that that will be a color, which is what we want. Whilst we're not going to be doing anything with the points yet, we are going to take this opportunity to set it up. So we're going to add another variable as well. Uh, I'm going to call this one points. So this is what each one of the blocks is going to be worth. This needs to be public as well so that we can change that from within the level. And we're going to change the variable type to float. Integer probably works as well, but I'm going with float. So at this stage, I'm just going to compile and save just so I know where I am. And it gives me access to some of my variables here as well. So you can see now I can change things here if I want to. Oh, if I can see what I'm doing, we've got a color there as well. But we're not quite done with this construction script yet. So out of the return value here, we need a set vector parameter. And you can see that we're now going to be setting the color using this. It tells you in the tooltip for this, the target is the material instance dynamic. We've got a dynamic material instance here. I don't know why they've changed the ordering of the words, but that's going to allow us to set that. And what we need to do is just get the block color. So let's get it. Uh, we're going to connect it to the value. So that's what's going to be setting the color of our dynamic material instance. And just so that we get um, the right starting color, I'm going to set the default color of the block material to white. And it will at least match up with what we've got already. I also just want to give a name to this parameter uh, under parameter name. I'm just going to call it color. That should do nicely. And that should do it for us for now. So we're going to compile and save this and see whether or not it's having the desired functionality in our level. So let's go back to level one. You can see I've already got my uh, my rows of blocks set up. So let's get a little bit close to these so I can see them. Lovely. And I'm just going to select, uh, I'll select them a row at a time. So let's get this top row here. And the color for these, they're kind of furthest away. So I'm probably just going to set these to red. You can see now that I've got them selected, these parameters that I've just added have become available. So I can set the color of these blocks, hopefully. So let's set these ones to red. Hey, <laughs> it's working. Woo! So we set those to red. Bonza. And let's say that these are going to be worth 100 points. That is some big points right there. Okay, so keeping sort of in line with the original, I think the next row I'm going to have as being like an orange color. So let's just find something that looks kind of orange. Um, that's nice and orangey, I think. So we'll click OK on that. And the points for these, let's have, we're going to set these at 50. That is a good points number, I think. Then we're going to work our way down to the next row. I think you can see where I'm going with this. Now you can probably work out the rest for yourself. But I shall put it on video just to be helpful. Um, according to my little guide that I've got on screen as well for the, the breakout colors, I think this is going to be like a lighter orange. So let's just... Or maybe going towards yellow. Something... Just a yellowy orange. Let's, let's go with that. And the next set of points we're going to set to 25. We'll halve it again. And then we're going to go to the next to last row right here. We'll give these 10 points each. And the color, we'll probably just keep working our way around this color wheel, I think, is a good way to go. So yeah, we need to be hitting the green spectrum a little bit. And then we'll just go to this nearest row of the blocks and five points. These are rubbish blocks. We don't want any more than five points for these because they're not that good. They're just the closest ones. And we'll have a nice greeny green color. Hey, that looks beautiful. It's like a rainbow. 
Okay, let's have a little look, see how that's looking in game. Oh, that is looking pretty. There we go. So we now have different colored blocks that we can add in level. And we can also assign different points to them, which we can add up. We're not actually counting the points up yet. We're not doing anything with them. Uh, but it does mean that we will be able to going forward. So before we can actually do anything with the score, we're going to need a bit of a UI to the game. So we're going to need to count how many lives or balls we've got left. And we're also going to need to put the score on screen. So the next step is going to be about setting up that UI and getting it to display. So I hope to see you for that one. I believe that quality education should be available to everybody. And for that reason, all of the classes at Game Dev Academy are completely free. And we're supported by our very generous school governors over at Patreon. If you'd like to become a Game Dev Academy Governor and support our work, as well as helping us to steer the channel in the right direction, then use the link in the description to be taken to the Patreon page.